actions of Midgard, Atreus does still care for you. I know. I raised a son, too. It may be hard to believe, but he was quite similar to Atreus at this age. He adored his father, always wanted to do right by him, and was constantly frustrated that no matter what he did, he never could seem to get his approval. He confided in me a lot, sought the comfort his father would have. I wonder if your son could benefit from that, too. He has befriended the other dwarf, the Blue One's brother. Oh. Well, if Sindri has that covered, I suppose there's no need for me in his life anymore, is there? That is not what I meant. That was sarcasm. Much of the sand has been cleared away, but another storm rages beyond that pass, which must mean... Another half, Gufa! <laughs> It looks as though the Light Elf sealed off this section of the Barrens. Why? Luckily for us, a very considerate goddess has enhanced our magic chisel, and we can unseal it. My, that is lucky. The Forbidden Sands lay beyond. Contested territory, according to Bela. And another storm to endure. <laughs> I remember when Freyr and I traveled to this realm as children. The desert was healthy and full of life back then. I can't help but fear that era has ended for good and our efforts here are futile. It's a fair concern. Healing this land will take more than a pair of singing half -gifa. But I have to believe in the long run, we're doing right by Alphine. Well... Best we start looking for a way underground. Keep a lookout for a cave! I hope Freyr will appreciate our work here in the desert. I wonder if he knows how poorly this realm has fared in his absence. Aye. Hearing the Song of the Sands again is a rare privilege, even if it's only a solo act. Or a duet, once this Hopgoofa is free. Abandoned ancient settlement by the looks of it. Built long before the Lightwell's creation. More hive matter as well. I'd say we're on the right track then.
kind of hive material is sensitive to sound? You and Atreus, I assumed the absence of Alfheim's light was an aberration. I didn't realize it was covered. Aye, and as far as the Dark Elves are concerned, it's that light column in the center of the temple that's the aberration. Just look at how old some of these surfaces are. Far older than the light well, or even our trapped half giver for that matter. Well, dangle from a burly god's backside for a few weeks, and you'll find yourself looking for all sorts of new perspectives. More hive, but denser. Well, there you go. don't often travel underneath the barrens, do they? Territory changes hands often in Nalfheim. So it appears. Big Vier did mention that these ruins have historical significance for the Light Elves. I assume they're only here to keep intruders out. Well... below would disagree.
good eye. Let's continue, shall we? Goofers will allow them to breed again. It was a dazzling display once. The skies of Alfheim filled with their song. I imagine it's the lack of fresh light that's caused this pair to grow abnormally large. No use in having babies if there's nothing for them to feed on. Trying to protect their children from the harsh world. <laughs> I wonder if these two comprehend the choice they face when it's free. What choice do you speak of? The life cycle of the Hafgufa. In order to breed, they must pass on their light to their children. And without light, they will die. I suppose that's all any of us can hope for in the end. That our death has purpose. That we can live on through our children. Well, given another chance, I know what choice I would there's some twilight stone. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 
part. Used in many of Freyr's blessings, I imagine. fate of these creatures. It reminds me of a story. Does it? There once was a blacksmith whose king commanded him to construct a box that could contain all the evils of the world. But no metal could hold its power. So the blacksmith used the flame Kratos, of... is this a story meant to ease my grief? Perhaps it is just a story. A way to pass the time. I appreciate the sentiment. Well, your stories... I wouldn't exactly call them a comfort. Fair. Mamir is the better storyteller. Now, don't sell yourself short, but you've come a long way from the days of laconic fables. It's okay. Finish your story, Kratos. The blacksmith's daughter is the key to unlocking the box. He died trying to protect her from those who would open it. Well, at least it's a relatable story.
appears we've overstayed our welcome in our place. Yet again. safety. Even these creatures know. There is little choice for a parent. You are not alone. I'm not, am I? And now neither are they. Thank you, Kratos. This land sings once more. We've done good here. No rush to leave yet, is there? Who knows what kind of adventures await us in a freshly lit barrens? Wonder. Why was Freya so revered here so quickly on his first arrival? Well, to begin with, it wasn't his first arrival. Very few know this, but Freya was one of the earliest visitors to Alfheim back in the dawn of realm travel. Oh, but before my time. Do tell. We believed for a long time that all the giants had died in the flood ah! until one of them appeared in Vanaheim. Enough. We will continue later. What is that? Oh. A phantom! Rune magic! Aim for the runic core! What is yeah. Look at that thing! It's vulnerable when it glows! Save yourself an opening! Don't waste it! Keep on it! The Alpha! 
I suppose. The magic draining out of all of us has to end up somewhere. Another of Cavassier's poems. Oh, lady, I was curious about some of the flora we've encountered on our travels. And you will remain curious. It's not my job to teach you everything, Mamir. Look, I was just asking. And you have been told. Oh, you can say that again. <laughs> ah! on one of my horns. Let's see if I can pull it off. No. archive of knowledge no sign of the light elves for now maybe they've left for the day and we can browse at our leisure <laughs> so these are the valiant schematics eh you know of him aye one of the most gifted dwarven smiths around until he developed a conscience, anyhow. Not enough to end the Elven War, but restricting their access only serves those who wish to prolong it. Taking a break. Aye, quite the advantage for the Light Elves. All this knowledge of their ancestors, their shared history, poetry, just sitting here. What a waste. This book is. 
are sealed, but there is an inscription. The Consul. Big Via spoke of an exile of the same name. Odds are he'd like a gander at that particular text. Ah, it appears the librarian would like a word. Lotta Framborg. Sounds like she wants that journal back. No. Use the shield strike, brother! <laughs> 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 all this knowledge away. Our ally wishes to read this journal. We are taking the book. I'm impressed. Thought you were going to end her. When last we traveled here, after Faye passed, I killed an elf of great importance. The ramifications were dire for his people. I do not wish to make the same mistake twice. <laughs> Freya, do you mind picking up that story about your brother? I think you said a giant had appeared in Vanaheim. That's right. Her name was Gerd, and she came offering to teach us the secrets of traveling between realms using Bifrost light. Freyr became immediately infatuated with her. She always yearned to wander, and along came someone who could truly show him how. So, wander they did, exploring the world tree from root to branch. 
But one day, it came time for Gerth to wander away. Freyr was heartbroken and resolved himself to perform some great feat to win her back. He set his aim on the grandest of gestures. He intended to be the first to find the elusive source of Bifrost light. And he succeeded, although quite by accident. Freyr believed he navigated best while fortified by a potent blend of Vanir herbs. When he wandered, he wandered. And he managed to wander from the World Tree directly into the Lake of Souls. The elves have never seen anybody come out of the lake before, so it got some attention. Oh, that is bloody hilarious. I don't know whether he worked his charms at that point or they just assumed him to be a great deity. But of course, he hadn't made this journey in search of responsibility, so he didn't stick around long. Still, the legend of his manifestation was passed along through the ages. It even endured after the Great Division, remembered by light and dark elf alike. So when at last he returned, he was uniquely situated to gain the trust of both sides and help to create a truce. The problem was, both sides trusted only him. So the peace could only last as long as he stayed around to keep it. And with the long war dragging on without an end in sight, I suppose making any kind of peace was an irresistible notion for him. Even if it meant having to rule. <laughs> In my travels, I heard of a great battle in your homeland, at a place called the Gates of Fire. The Hard Gates. You are there? <laughs> Is that regret in your voice? I did regret not dying there for many years, but no longer.
Lemire, I never asked how it felt to lose your head. What would you have me say? That it tickled? Merely curious. If you wish to derive some satisfaction from my pain, I'm afraid you'll be disappointed. Kratos swung swift and true, didn't you, brother? I felt nearly a scratch. Shame. A dawn bloom. You have an interest in botanicals now? mentions a spell that puts trolls to sleep and a magic relic that acts as a sort of counter spell talking about in particular giving up your body i regret exchanging my life for my freedom that's a question i ask myself every day my what about today today glad to be out in the world how else could i spend such quality time with you okay okay
statue of my brother. How quaint. That's odd. The runes are dark. What purpose does all this serve, other than a testament to my brother's vanity? Difficult to say without an inscription. But it looks like the elves built this place together, light and dark. Which means this would have been their first act of cooperation in generations. A far cry from lasting peace, but perhaps it served as a monument. One that symbolizes the potential for peace. Freya's absence, but a truce clearly is not. Monuments are useless to those who ignore their message. He didn't create a truce through diplomacy alone. His godhood, his very presence is what healed this land and allowed peace to take root. But once he left, he had to have known what would happen. Well, he had good reason to leave. Jackass convinced his sister to marry a madman. said monuments are useless. Why restore this one? It was hidden for some time. Perhaps now it can serve as a reminder. Aye. Nothing reminds people of their history like chiseled, well-lit marble. You're right. Normally we'd have to provide our own. Perhaps slotting a crystal on the opposite side could shed some light on this mystery. Ugh. Well, looks like we can read the inscription now as well. In honor of the enlightened one, may his gift of light shine eternal. Ah, gift of light. The light from the crystals. It is in the sand now. Would you look at that? Freya's gift endures after all. Or should I say, his presence? You are not funny.
Surely a bit of extra life in the desert isn't enough to make it last. Before I met Faye, I could not imagine a life of peace. After her death, in our travels to Jotunheim, I found peace on my own. It remains my responsibility to make it last. Perhaps the elves will find peace again one day, even without Freya's guidance. His presence continues to guide them, whether they realize it or not. We can bring these two animals back to Vanaheim, or Midgard even. Specky and Spanner could use the company. We have kennels. It would not go well for them. Once a predator becomes accustomed to a land, it is cruel to move them. I suppose you're right. It just seems lonely out here. It's peaceful. They have each other. It is enough. You know, Freyer loved to breed Gulan pups in Vanaheim. I wonder if these two are the descendants of the Gulan he brought here long ago. That explains how they got to the desert. Another gift for the Dark Elves. Ah! Later, we're gonna have to find a lock to put them in. I wonder, how these two pups end up yoked to the sled? Ever try flying in a sandstorm? I imagine Freyr showed the Dark Elves that Gulan could be trained to pull a plow. They must have found new uses for them once the sandstorm arrived. I imagine they're now bred to aid in traveling the surface.
Drake doing back there? Your guess is as good as mine. Imprisoning a Drake? I can't decide whether to be impressed or horrified. Either way, it is over now. Token. A badge of honor. The elves made a few of these. They'd hang them up outside their dwellings, show their support for my brother. That's all my brother's tributes. Would you prefer we hang on to them? Do what you will. If Freyr didn't bother taking them when he left Alfheim, he wouldn't mind us selling them to the dwarves. Habit, I suppose, since I don't sleep anymore. You know, it's far more confounding that I'm the tired one. I've seen you stay awake for days at a time without so much as a drooping eyelid. Not even a nap. Gods do not nap. Oh, I tell that to Thor.
before you see the lad again, might we discuss an approach? He will tell me where he has been. That is my approach. Ah, classic Spartan diplomacy. Wait. Did you say Odin invited him to Asgard, and then he disappeared for two days? Aye. But surely the lad's got more sense than to... Don't underestimate Odin's powers of persuasion. He filled my son's head with lies. Why wouldn't he do the same with yours?